check it out for just real quick like, and I'll go with some names. Hello, everybody. Good to welcome y'all. We're back to our normal services and normal time. Hey, if you have a prayer list that you want to, our prayer request, if you'll put it on the screen, I'll do my best to read it. Try to do it short. Uh, if it cuts off a lot of the lines. So if you'll give me a short notice, I'll be happy to do that. Hey, here are the ones that we know. K uh, Cassidy Ferguson. Um, she's the granddaughter of, uh, somebody help me. Lisa Moore. Lisa Moore. Uh, trying, she's trying to go into uh, early delivery, and they're trying to keep her to wait a little while. Uh, did I hear she went to Huntsville? I think she might, I think they transferred her to, if I'm not mistaken, I heard that today. But uh, pray for her. Uh, she's really young, uh, or in the pregnancy. She still need to go a little bit while. Hello, Lynn Seal. Hello, Patsy Walton. Grace Ann Hall's having stress tests. Lisa Hamlin is recovering well. Thank God she's doing good. Doug Heiss, uh, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Doug, David Marcoux, we shared with you that he uh, does have COVID. Again, mild symptoms, just, just kind of like a cold. Hey, Landon, we just got the news today. Um, well, we had about, a, about six weeks, didn't want to say anything. We went to a specialist in uh, Huntsville. Landon had a birth defect. We, 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 we thought he was lazy and he wouldn't run. And uh, we, we really did. We bust his, you know, anyhow. Um, come to find out, the ligaments and the cartilage in his leg did not develop the way it's supposed to, and the bone around that has died. So uh, they're going to have to go in there and drill through the bone and connect the ligaments and the tendons uh, to hopefully get some blood vessels in that area to make that bone come alive. We're looking at a year rehab, one year. So he is not a happy camper. We knew something was wrong. We just didn't know exactly. He, he, he run, but it was like he, his leg was disjointed or something. We could not figure out what was going on. So we got here, checked him, and, and, and he, he made the right diagnosis, but something that serious, we just wanted to get a guy that that's all he does. So y'all really pray for him. He just got that news about an hour ago. He'll be on crutches six weeks. Uh, can't put his foot on the ground for three months, and then there'll be about four or five more months of rehab. So pray for little Landon. We're just tore up. So uh, bless his little heart. And uh, eighth grade, big year, all that. In, in yeah. Not a good time. Uh, Louise Sawyer fell uh, last weekend. She did not uh, break her hip. She broke her upper femur five places. I, I didn't know you could do that. Broke her upper femur where it connects to the hip in five places. So they went there and just literally had to put it back all back together. She's now at Glenwood uh, rehabbing. The only problem, you know, Miss um, Louise is 98 years old. Uh, a lot of disorientation, doesn't know how to, and, and you can't visit her. Uh, hey, hey um, prayers for Landon. We got it, sis. Just shared it. Um, she's just real disoriented. They cannot go in and see her. She can't even answer the phone. She, she don't know how to. So, uh, y'all really pray for that family. They're very close. You don't know anything about Tom. So, y'all please lift Louise up in prayer. Uh, they said the surgery went for a 98 year old went good, but but she's got to do rehab, and she 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 can't even hardly. Um, Anyhow, just a tough situation right now, so y'all please pray for her, okay? Any other church family? we got friends. How about church family? Everybody good? Hey, here's some friends and family. Just remember them, okay? Uh, Barbara Austin's great-granddaughter, she's having, uh, j just born, having a lot of trouble eating, can't keep food down, something's going on there. They're going to have to go and do some intestinal uh, discovery. So please pray for Finley Gillen uh, as they do that. Gene Blazer's son-in-law. Uh, COVID and pneumonia doing doing okay. Pretty, he's a pretty strong guy. I took him in an ambulance yesterday uh, in the hospital in Asheville, in the Bean Hospital yeah. in Asheville. And they uh, put IVs and I'm doing a bunch of stuff, testing him. And uh, let him, Amy and my granddaughter stayed mm. in the parking lot and they That's let it. him come home at 3 o'clock this morning. But he, he was up and around. So oh, good. He even called me. And oh, wow. I've got the floor. Uh, Bless his heart. Carrie's husband, and I reckon they're still members here. Brian yes. and Carrie Hale. Uh, he had to go be tested this morning. He's got to wait 48 hours. That hours, yeah. That's uh, crazy. He thinks he's got it. Got it. Got Well, it's popping out there. So, uh, Steve Oliver had it. it. Now his nephew, you can see on here, Luke has it. So, it, you know, it's popping pretty, pretty bad around. So, Wash your hands, do what you got to do, be careful. Um, you know, distance yourself if you can. Uh, pray for all these th these people, though, as they, as they figure out what to do in the best way to, to uh, medically treat it. 
Um, pray for Anita Wilson. Pray for her as she continues to recover from stroke. Benji Woodard, this is Angie Brandon's nephew. Um, hopefully, uh, Brandon was ejected out of a car about two weeks ago, broke all to pieces. Carried him down to UAB. They've done surgery after surgery, and you can see here there's just a lot of stuff going on. So he really needs a lot of prayers. Um, I saw a little clip of him the other day. He could barely talk. He just said, thank everybody for praying for him. It was pretty sweet. So. I don't know, 20, I would say 20 probably. I don't know him. Uh, I would say 20, I, I would think so, I think so. Hey, Juanice Pope, pray for my grandson. He fell and broke both wrists yesterday. Oh, bless your heart, been there. Pope, pray for pray for them, we'll do that. Hey, Betty Hanson, hey, Regina Bacon. So pray for all of them, okay? Any other friends and relatives we need to know about? I didn't bring a pen. I've got a daughter-in-law this Okay, right. Make, making sure, yeah, sure. Anybody else? We have a friend, Taylor Scott. Yeah. Um, his wife, Javen, they just had a baby. I mean, I would say two weeks ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, baby was full term and everything, but when the baby was born, it had spina bifida. Ooh. It was completely undiagnosed, everything. So they are adjusting. I'm just That's tough. seeing Facebook oh, updates sure. and things. That's tough. But. Well, that's a good punch, man. Yeah. Pray for the Scott family and everybody in that. Uh, hope they get them to the right medical stuff quick. To, wow, bless them. Bless them, Lord Jesus. Wow. Anybody else? Everybody else okay? Everybody all right? Okay. Hey, if you'll flip that over. Hey, these are the people that we mentioned. By the way, um, we now are doing... Uh, we just pray for Miss Kaylee, Miss Lisa, mentioned her. Um, hey, we have added to our calling post one just for senior adults and not really shut-ins, but people who just can't, for whatever reason, maybe not be able to come right now. So it's about 30, 40 people. I, I don't know. They, they do that in the office. But I try to once a week call them and just leave a message. How you doing? Hope everything's good. Anything changed? Anything we need to know? So if you know somebody like that, church-related, that you'd want to put on there because it don't, don't mean to be a – money miser but it costs to do those calling posts so we have to be kind of frugal with them but if you know somebody that church wide needs you think needs to be on there if you'll call jackie don't tell me i love you <laughs> tell jackie she can check and see if we're already doing it she i don't have that list so they have a list that they they've done this on so here's some of the people on that list people like don and pat cochran carl derricott betty hansen holly jackson sarah jackson glenda james even though glenda's been able to come back to worship services a little bit lately Stella Jones, Maurice McGill. Maurice is recovering from a hospital stay about two weeks ago. Philip Peck, recovering from cancer. Charles and Barbara Phillips. I think I saw Miss Barbara online. Hey, Miss Barbara, tell Brother Charles behave himself. Uh, Sherry Ponder, who is in hospice care uh, due to that situation. Landa Tackett, James Thornton, and Betty White. So these are people, again, just have certain situations where they can't get out. or Some of them can a little bit, but not much. So please remember them. These are the ones we know are in nursing care or at least assisted living. Anita Briley, May Jean Hughes, and then Bonnie Bump. Bonnie's not in a nursing care or assisted living. She's in an apartment, but she can't get out. So we just kind of put her in that same situation, okay? So remember all them. And by the way, we got, the, if you'd like to, you can't visit any of these, hardly. Uh, maybe Bonnie, the rest of them you cannot visit. But if you'd like to send a card, a uh, little, hey, get well, love you, thinking about your card, that, that'd be pretty good. They get them from the church regular. Uh, these all people, by the way, get a card from the church every week with a bulletin in it, prayer list, and everything that we do. So they get they get correspondence every week, and then they get the phone call. So we're trying to do everything we can to, to support that group. Uh, we do not want to forget them. They, they sacrificed and served here, so we want to let them know we love them. So please pray for them. Yeah. And then nursing care assisted living. The Briley and the why can't they have this is are they in a nursing care? Yeah, they will not let you visit right now. Yeah. Okay. They will not let you go. But when they get back to Yeah, Miss Arnita wouldn't know you were there. She is right. totally gone. May Jean you could. Uh now up until about six weeks ago you could go visit May Jean if you scheduled the visit. They would bring her outside to you. You couldn't go in. So they shut all that down. Yeah, you can't visit at all. It's spread so fast in the nursing homes. Mm -hmm. It's just, and it's deadly. 
so they don't let you in at all, yeah. But you can call or you can send, and that's what we do. I wish you could have known her. Uh, oh, man. She was a pistol pete. I'm uh, twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I accused her of taking cocaine. I said, nobody <laughs> at 80 years old can be the way you are if you're not on cocaine. That's impossible. <laughs> Jumping up and around, I said, you're on cocaine. You know, she's, she's some. Say that. Who's that? 885 in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Her husband just died. They had to move her out of the house. They just got tough. Oh, yeah. 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 She's out in the ocean. I went, May Jean Hughes, get out of the ocean. You're 80 years old. Good night. <laughs> she said a shark wouldn't want no old man. <laughs> it spit me out. I said, woman, get up in the house. Uh, she's something else, boy. If you ever started to dance, she'd finish it. I'll guarantee you. She could, you don't start no dancing around her, she'd finish it. I'm just telling you right now, she could do it. Oh, maybe she was something else. Hey, these are uh, groups of people that we, we uh, groups that we pray for regularly, and we, we mention them. That's our missions and mission workers, our missionaries around the world. These are some of the ones that we know personally have dealings with them, so the Lord bless them and be with them. Uh, and they're the names that we try to keep up with where they are. Some of these move around a little bit. So we try to keep a pretty good idea of where they are and, and kind of what they're up to. Right now, everybody's just about shut down. So, uh, But pray for all of our missions and the mission work because it is really, really hurting right now. So ask God to bless. Pray that they just don't get discouraged because a lot of them can't come home. They're stuck. They can't, they can't get out of their house to go do mission work. They can't get out of their house to come home. Uh, so they're, they're really stuck in a, in a tight situation right now. Uh, a lot of countries are a lot stricter than we are. You get to go out one day a week. They give you a card with a color. And if they catch you out without that, the right color card, they find you and, and just pray for them, okay? I don't think I need to say this. Please pray for our military men and women. Uh, everything that they're going through right now is just crazy. Uh, ask the Lord to bless them and keep them safe and bring them home please, and, and ask the Lord just to give them grace. Hey, Ken Johnson, Lisa Miller. Um, so just ask the Lord to be with all of our missionary and all of our military personnel, wherever they are and what they're doing. Hey, this is something I just throw every now and then. You say, hey, I don't believe in what they're doing. doesn't matter if you believe in what they're doing. If they're there, then we need to pray for them, that they come home, all right? Uh, not, not praying for something that we don't believe in, but we're praying for the people. And by the way, their parents who are here having to deal with that. that that's tough. Uh, we like to mention our medical personnel. Please pray for them as they have to deal with, uh, like I said, these situations where uh, uh, Miss Pepler, uh, pray for them. They'll bury her mother. Said, you know, she was in the room. We couldn't go in. And so it's tough. So ask God to give our medical personnel grace as they deal with some just unusual, unprecedented times. Hey, and remember that too. We are in unprecedented. We've never been here before. We've, we've never been in anything like this. So you, you just do the best you can. Uh, and make the best decisions. Our law enforcement, please pray for their protection, their families. Um, good news, that's enough. Congratulations to Brad and Melissa Brooks, uh, great-grandmother Martha Stutz on the birth of grandson Reed Bennett. Uh, Bennett was the uh, the granddad, Martha's husband, who passed away, uh, I, I don't know, 95, 96, hard to remember exactly when. But uh, So pray for that family. They named him after granddad Bennett. So. Uh, congratulations to the Brooks family and Miss Martha. We love them and pray the Lord be with them, okay? Um, th these are some people that we know of who was lost loved ones this week. Uh, Danny Michael, uh, that was the son of Doris and Rink Michael. I don't know them, but uh, just not an easy way to do that. And then many of you may know, um, I don't do much personal counseling outside of spiritual, uh, leading people to Christ, stuff like that typically. Um, I'll, I'll sit down and have one session with you too if it's, if it's of a very spiritual nature but if it's something that needs to be counseling professionally then I send you over to the Colbert Lauderdale Association Dwight Wilson was that counselor for a long time now Miss Harrison, J.D. Harrison's does that, that's the pastor uh, J.D.'s wife, pastor's wife his son died in his sleep this weekend, 54 years old um, he had um, severe, severe like Judy Diabetic, he ketoacidosis. I think uh, probably had a coma in, in, in his sleep, and uh, that, that, that ketoacidosis is bad stuff. It really is. I, I I didn't even know what it was until Judy had her first episode. Some of y'all remember that. That's what started our journey, and we didn't know if we'd bring her home. Uh, we 
couldn't wake her up for 24 hours. And so he, he had been struggling with this for a long, long time, and uh, he went to sleep. So y'all pray for Dwight Wilson. Ask the Lord to please be with him. Great guy. He pastors over at New Bethel in Tuscumbia. So I'm just telling you, great, great, great guy. He, he really is. So ask the Lord to please uh, bless him and be with him, all right? Any other prayer requests or announcements? Prayer requests or announcements? Suggestions? <laughs> Is that is all right? Y'all remember those suggestion box? Hey, no suggestion? I can't believe it. This many babies and not one suggestion? Surely. Yeah, sure. coming up Saturday. Yes, sir, that's right. Thank you. Remember that. Uh, lift them up. Boy, that's going to be a... Uh, and, uh, hey, I, I, I don't want to get a fight started, but, you know, the Taliban now is back in control like when we started 20 years ago. And so, we, you know, I just... So, it's going to be a tough day. Or a lot of people, a lot of military people went over and fought, and now it's right back where it was. So that's that's a tough situation. So pray for them. They feel like they, uh, whatever. All right. Thank you, Gene. I forgot about that. Nine eleven. 11 It's hard to believe it's been 20 years. It's tough. Oh, jeez. All right. Hey, turning your Bible. Hey, let me tell you what I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm resourcing some old messages. <clears throat> What, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm just, I changed offices, and so I've got, just going through some of my old messages, and uh, I love the 23rd Psalm. Uh, um, I don't have to say why. 23-4 is the most, outside of John 3-16, may be the most quoted verse in all the Bible. Google says it's one of the top verses ever. Uh, what do you call on Google? What do you do when you search? search when you search Google. So it's one of the top, uh, still one of the top five verses in all the Bible. By the way, even among lost people, 23rd Psalm, they know it. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, so it's one of the greatest verses that speaks to the community and the world out there at large. And so uh, we're going to do the called the Shepherd Psalm. And, uh, hey, there's a misspelled word in there. I'm sorry if you find it. I'll give you a nickel. How about that? All right. So there's a misspelled. Sorry. I was in a hurry. Um, I, I want to go through that. I don't, I don't think we'd have time to do all five of these. What I've done is taken each verse and just written a little lesson on each verse. Y'all found it? Yeah, there you go. There you go. So I took each verse, and I personalized it for me this morning, just going through some old stuff. And so I, I want to do that, and uh, I'll have some, I think, do y'all have blanks fill in or empty? Empty, all right. We'll, we'll fill in some blanks, okay? And uh, uh, number one, we may not get off that one because that's, that's a tough one, okay? So we're going to fill in some blanks tonight. Number one. We, we all know the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, he's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He's the, uh, matter of fact, if you go to John 10 and 11, talks about the Lord's a shepherd. Um, speaks here, number one, of a personal relationship. Notice the personal pronouns. The Lord is whose shepherd? My shepherd. Who shall not want? So he's talking very personal relationship here. Uh, it, it speaks of somebody who knows the person that they're talking about or hears something, the person they're talking to. Hey, if you call my house and my grandson answers my phone, uh, we have a problem because he can read like a blooming genius. So he knows your name on my phone. It's going to say it. And he'll pick it up and say, hey, Gene, how you doing? <laughs> I said, don't do that, kid. Quit doing that. And they're, they're having a conversation thinking... You know, and, and anyhow, he does. He picks up the phone. How you doing, Theo? And I said, quit doing that. Bring me the phone. Um, so it's a personal relationship. It's something that's real. Hey, be be before I give you, um, well, well, I'll do, I got about six different points here. I only give you three. Number one, the shepherd loves the sheep. Matter of fact, John said he gave his life for the sheep. So under number one A, the shepherd loves the the sheep. He gave himself for them. Don't you think about that just for a moment. Normally, don't you think about this, normally the sheep give their life for the shepherd, correct? Mm -hmm. This is in reverse. The shepherd gives his life for the sheep. It's the sheep who are sheared. I don't mean to be gross here. It's the sheep who, if they get hungry, guess who's on the menu? Yeah. Little, little, lily lamb. So the Bible says here it's in reverse. Jesus loves you and me so much. And the, by the way, when the Bible calls you a sheep, that's not necessarily a compliment because a sheep is very uh, intellectually um, challenged. challenged. <laughs> they can't see. They're nearsighted. And so 
They say that a sheep will eat on a bank and just walk right off the cliff if you don't have somebody to guard it and take care of it. So when, when this relationship is real, it's because the shepherd literally has the sheep's life in his hand. A sheep, you, you think a sheep's going to whip a lion? <laughs> My, no, not, not anything going to die. So ultimately, his life, is in their hands. But the Bible says in reverse here that the shepherd is the one who laid down his life for the sheep. Can I give you the illustration? David stepped in between a lion and a bear for his sheep. Can I just say something right here? I would. Go ahead, Mr. Lion, have all you want. I'm going to the house. I'm going up a tree. No, I'm not going to fight a bear over a little hairy-legged, mangy, stinking sheep. Have you lost your mind? But yet, if the shepherd loves the sheep, he will always. Matter of fact, if you read John, uh, really 10, 11, and 12, it says, the shepherd sees the enemy coming, and he's prepared to take care of us. Don't you think about that. So it's a personal relationship. Number one, the shepherd loves the sheep. Number two, the Bible says the sheep follow the shepherd. The sheep follow. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. Why? Because I'm going with the shepherd. He knows where to go. He knows what to do. I don't. A shepherd always has the best, in best mind, what the sheep need. And I'll say more about that in just a moment. So the shepherd loves the sheep. He has what's in best mind for them. And the sheep know that because of that they follow him. Uh, Y'all know uh, my wife has dogs. <laughs> go outside and everywhere I go, that dog goes. Just go away, dog. And he just, he thinks I love him. <laughs> He's really deceived. Um, I, like I'm, I'm not mean to no dog, don't blah blah blah. But um, <laughs> that little sheep doesn't know anything other but than to follow that shepherd. Don't you listen to me? That'll teach us a lesson. You better know who you're following. Amen. Don't take your eyes off the shepherd, because if you do, not good things. Hey, l l let me give you three things right here in relationship with this. Number one, uh, th this is another three, so I, I didn't give room. Number one. Shepherd knows, will not you listen to this carefully? He knows the name of every one of his sheep. Can you prove that? 99 and one sheep left, and he knew it. will not you think about that just for a minute? He knows the name. Matter of fact, the Bible said when you got saved, God gives you a new name. There's a, remember that old song, there's a new name written down in heaven. Well, the Bible says he knows your name. Here's something, he knows your needs. Um, I, I want you to listen real carefully. No human can meet your needs. Not all of them. They can't. It's impossible. Only God can meet the deepest needs <coughs> of your life. Uh, I'll have some people who get saved and they think, man, they just want to, they think because I'm pastor, I can, I, can, I can do everything. For, I can't. I'm a human being. I can do so much. But I have to get them to the shepherd because the shepherd is one who knows, and listen carefully, he knows their real needs. He knows the thing in the heart that you don't tell anybody else. So he knows your name, but he knows your needs. Here, this is good. He knows your nature. Every sheep is different. He knows your nature. Your nature's not like mine. We all have different natures, and God knows your nature. The word nature there refers to your makeup, who you are, what you do, why do you do it. Proverbs says God, in ju God judges the intent of the heart. God knows the nature. He knows not only your name, your needs. By the way, that, that word name or that, that, that word name is interesting. Did you know when somebody says your name, something pops up in their mind automatically? Their, their mind and yours. When, their let's mind. say if I say uh, Ed, something pops up in your mind. My husband, uh, Grouch. <laughs> Bow tie. Bow tie. <laughs> See there? <laughs> I want, you to, I want you to think that for just, just a minute. Just think about that. Here's a good person. Here's a bad person. Here's a sneaky person. You've got to watch them. I trust them. Your name is associated with something. Um, you might want to think about that. When people say your name, what do they think? Pretty big deal there. Can I give you a verse? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So think about that. 
So a personal relationship means this. The shepherd loves the sheep. The sheep follow the shepherd. But number C, this is good. The shepherd always knows what's best for the sheep. By the way, and I won't say this, we're going to get theological here a minute. God does allow bad things to happen to the sheep. He does. God does allow bad things and good things to happen to the sheep. Why? Because sometimes he has to teach you. You remember that word, the staff, thy rod and thy staff? You know what he does with that rod? I've heard several things. Number one, it has a crook on the end where he can reach out if he's you know, pulling to him. But I also heard this, that if the little sheep keeps wandering off, he'll take that staff and break his leg. And he'll bandage that leg and he'll tote that sheep to teach him not to wander off because if he wanders too far, what's going to happen? He's going to die. So the shepherd will eventually, or will sometimes, in his sovereignty, allow bad things to happen to teach you that you need to trust and depend on him. So he, he loves us enough that he will do what's necessary in order to help us. Um, how, how do you teach a kid from not running out in the street? Do you, do you enjoy that? No, I just love beating on you, kid. No, that, that, that's not it at all. But when you do that, you're doing it for their what? For their best, for their life. Why, why do you, when they put their hands in a light socket, why do you spank their little hand? Because they don't know any better. And so you're teaching them. Uh, it, it's painful to them, but it's certainly necessary. So does the shepherd allow hard things to come into our life? Yes. Things that aren't enjoyable, yes. So that ultimately we can know that the shepherd has our best interest in mind. Um, my, my dad used to raise hogs, and he went and borrowed this 500-pound thing. It had <coughs> tusks and snarls. And, and I just wanted to see it and climbed up on the fence. And, boy, he hit me with an axe handle. Y'all ever been hit with an axe handle? It don't happen but once. <laughs> I guarantee you. And he said, that thing will kill you. I mean, that thing was tearing down barns. It, it was crazy. And he said, get away. He'd already told me, get away. Don't get around this hog. He's dangerous. And I, being me, just stuck my, I was going to stick my head over there, and I climbed up on the fence, and I put my leg over there, and boy, next thing I know, whop! And uh, good thing he did. Good thing would probably yeah. kill him. So, hey, aren't you glad you can have a personal relationship with the shepherd? Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. Not just yours. He's mine, my personal shepherd. When I go home tonight, I lay in my bed, I can pray to my shepherd. I can trust my shepherd. So David denotes here that our relationship with him is very personal. He knows my name. He knows my needs. Thank God he knows my nature. He does. We all have uh, idiosyncrasies is what they try, philosophically say. It just means you're weird. So, all right? So God, God knows those. Number two, not only... Is, does he speak of a personal relationship? Um, he talks about a path here. I really want you to see this. So the Lord's my shepherd. Remember, in, in, in when the Bible's written, there's no verses. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He what? Leadeth me beside still waters. There's this path, and he's speaking of refreshing. He makes me to lie down. He causes me to go to these still waters. Let, let me um, just make some good general statements. Number one, he leads them to the right place. You see, he knows where the grass is. He knows it with the changing of seasons. Maybe one area has been eaten down. And so he leads them to the right place. Thank God for the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for his direction in our life. He maketh me to lie down. That's an interesting it's a verb. It's action involved here. He leads, he guides, he maketh, he leads me beside steel waters um when the lord takes you somewhere he's leading you there for a purpose or for a reason for for something that he wants to do in your life maybe it's a relationship maybe it's a job think about that hey here's a story y'all remember abraham and lot lot chose what the well watered plains of sodom you know why he did that anybody want to guess money yeah, if I go down there, I know the sodomites live down there. He knew they were there. I know them bunch of sodomites are down there. 
And I know they're wicked as the devil, but I can take my family down there and I can make a lot of money. I told a guy today in Texas, I said, it's better for you to get out of your million dollar house where you're unhappy and move into a $200,000 house where you're happy. Because where you're at, you're not real happy. trouble and strife and hatred and I said man sell everything Get up, move get out of that lifestyle so Lot went down to Sodom what happened would you want to be Lot or would you want to be Abraham by the way if, if you study Hebrew culture the Bible indicates that he was the mayor of Sodom because he stood at the gate that's where the mayor stood it was a positional thing. The gate was where all the power is. The gate was, do you remember when Absalom usurped David's authority? Where did he go do it at? The gate. It's where everybody went. It's the meeting place. And some have suggested that, that he had become so ingrained in the lifestyle of Sodom. Uh, so he chose the wrong place. Abraham followed the Lord. What happened to Abraham? Rest speaks for itself. So be careful. When you make a decision, make sure that the shepherd's leading you and you're not just doing something for yourself. Um, by the way, your flesh likes to be pleased. Amen? Just be honest. Uh, I didn't need that chocolate ice cream yesterday, but my flesh sure wanted it. And, uh, <laughs> since you know it was good, <laughs> pay part later. All right, so um, the, the path that he leads us on is a path of refreshment. I'll, I'll get into just a little bit deeper subject here in a moment, but... Um, as you go through life, you know, you run Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, try to catch up Sunday. Get to church. Take a deep breath and do what? Start all over again. Man, man here, you, here we go. Like a rat on a racing hook with a little wheel, isn't it? Yeah. We're, we're all there. What, what, what do you do? Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, there's no guy said, if you don't come apart, you will come apart. You remember Jesus got up sometimes and went off by himself. Why? Listen carefully. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. Even Jesus knew that he needed time with the Father for refreshing. You need refreshing times. And uh, so do that. I want to ask you, have you ever fasted from your phone? You fast food? You ever fasted from your phone? TV? Y'all try it sometime. Uh, I was at a table one day with a guy, and I, I I'm not, I'm not bragging. I'm just trying to tell you. Sometimes you just need to take a break. And my phone was blowing up. He said, you going to answer? I said, no. He, and, and he was in, blah, blah, blah. That's him. And he said, why aren't you going to answer your phone? I said, because I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk to them. I'm talking to you. I'm not going to interrupt my conversation with you to talk mm -hmm. to them. They'll call me back. If it's bad enough, they'll leave a message. If it's my wife, she'll chew me out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, but sometimes... And I try to tell the staff that. You don't have to answer that phone every time it rings. That's a personal phone. You're, you're home. You don't have to. Just because the phone rings don't mean you got to say hello. It doesn't. Apologize to a guy today. Call me Saturday. I just said, I just, I said, I just don't mind telling you. There's a lot going on. I just took a little break. So learn to be refreshed. And I'm going to tell you, to be refreshed, you got to unplug. Um, I don't mind telling y'all, one of the things that I love to do to refresh is cut grass. I love to cut grass. I just, huh? I'll do it. I'm serious. I, I just, uh, man, if you put me on a mile-long stretch, I'm as happy cutting grass as I am playing tennis. I don't know why. I just enjoy cutting grass. Number one, nobody can talk to me. Think about that. So uh, every now and then you need to find something. Can I, can I just, that's the right place for you. Just to settle down and be still. Doesn't the Bible say that? Be still and know that I'm God. How are you going to do that if you don't ever go to the green pastures and the quiet waters? All right? Number two, not only does he lead the sheep to the right place, he speaks what they need to hear. But, but if you don't ever go to the green pastures and to the still waters, you'll never hear what he has to say. Is that B? Yes, B. He leads them to the right place. And is speaks what you need to hear. <laughs> speaks what you need to hear. Hey, um, about, let um, me sure I get this, well, I don't know the time. About three or four months ago, uh, I preached a message. I really didn't want to preach. It wasn't a me, ugly, but it's good. okay, but I, I just personally didn't get into it. I like to preach messages. I get something out of it that I would want to amen. 
And I'm just going to tell y'all, I, I, I preached that thing and it was like eating dirt. It was just dusty and dry. And I'm just telling you, I couldn't wait till I said amen. Thank God, get out of here and get this over with. And um, I came down and I was standing right over here and a couple came over and said, Pastor, thank you so much for that word today. And I said, what word? <laughs> they said, and, and I said, you got something out of that. They said, man, God spoke to our hearts. We needed to hear that. Isn't it good to know that God can take our dusty sermons, and I promise you he can speak into your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. So don't ever underestimate when God's trying to speak. By the way, sometimes there's a delay for you just spend a moment with the Lord. Just, just to be still, to know that he's God. Did you know it's hard to be still in our world today? You ever try to be still? Try it. Go into a worship service and don't do anything for five minutes. People think you're crazy. <laughs> go in there, don't say anything, don't sing anything. Just sit there, see what'll happen. People go nuts. Can't do it. They just they start getting the jerks, the jitters. They're so used to moving, singing. So learn to be still. To do that, you got to be at the right place. Um, God knows what you need to hear, but only you can be still long enough to hear it. Only you can do that. Nobody else make that time. Um, Judy and I both are going deaf. Do y'all yell at your house? <laughs> hey! What are you? <laughs> um, we was in the car the other day, and I said something three times. I said, I said this! She said, don't yell at me. I said, well, I said it three times. Good night. You want me to write you a letter or mail it or eat? Good night. We're going deaf. <laughs> and the kids laugh and say, y'all crazy. I said, well, you know. <laughs> It's just the way it is. You're just deep, and there's not anything you can do about it. Um, <laughs> hey, y'all uh, Y'all heard the cute little story about a little girl. She's about seven. She wanted a bicycle for her birthday, and they were praying. And they were in the mama's bedroom. They were on their knees. It was her birthday. And she said, oh, dear God, I want a red bicycle with those tassels. And, you know, she went through this whole thing. And the daddy said, honey, God ain't dead. Death, she said, yeah, I know, but granddaddy is. <laughs> Hey, aren't you glad God knows what we need? Yes. So he speaks. Hey, um, and, and then j just to kind of piggyback off that, then he supplies what you need. Not only does he, he know, he speaks, but, but I want you to know God ultimately knows what you really need. Um, God knows, again, he knows your name, your needs, your nature. So God knows what you need, when you need it. Um, uh, when I was young, I was very allergic to wasps and ants, anything like that. Boy, if I got bit, I had to go to the hospital or get in the cold bath of water. And, and then they came out with Benadryl. Thank God for Benadryl. Amen. And um, so, so um, I was playing tennis with a guy last night, and he got bit by some guinea wasp. And he said, and I took out my nepi pen. Epi pen. Epi pen. I'm sorry. I'm not caught on the medical term. And I said, what is a nepi pen? And, and I, he said, well, when I get shot, I give myself a shot. Man, isn't that a, a, it's amazing. So sometimes if we're not careful, though, we can overdose ourselves on stuff that we don't need. God knows what you need. He is a spiritual EpiPen that when the things of the world are consuming or devouring you, then he gives you what you need in order to bring, uh, sus to sustain you in your life. So remember that. Uh, his path always refreshes, always brings you to the place of contentment. And that word contentment in the life is not a bad word. Satisfied. Blessed is the word in the Beatitudes. Blessed. Are you blessed? Satisfied. Content. Thankful with what God is doing. Okay? Hey, uh, with our time. Uh, any questions right there? Let, let me stop. Any thoughts? Any good thoughts on that? I, I love verse 2. It takes you to the green pastures. And, and I could do things just on the green pastures and still water. That, 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 that's real good. But number three is, is outside of verse four is good. Because look at this. Why does he take you to the green pasture? Why does he take you to the still waters? Because here it is. He restoreth my soul. Whew. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There's a word name again. Hey, about five years ago, Miss Judy, did you ever play a mobile at Combo or anything? Yeah. About, well, maybe seven years ago. It was so hot, they had to set up tents. And, <clears throat> Yeah, it, it was terrible. People were passing out, and they literally set up tents about ever, ever so far. And you go in and you get liquid 
whatever it is that you need. Um, so I, w I was warming up on the court with a guy who was getting ready to play, and next to me was the singles. And they, well, actually, I was playing singles, he's playing singles, and the guy's warming up. He warmed up, they got ready to start the match, and he said, I default. And, uh, well, I said, you hurt? He said, no, I ain't playing in this weather. <laughs> I don't have to. I ain't doing it. And we were all kind of, man, you know, you know, you know, you know what you think. But I, I hate to say this, we were stupid for being out there doing that. He said, I'm not risking my life to play in a tennis match on something this silly. And so he said, he packed his tennis bags up. I'm telling you, he told his coach, I forfeit. I'm not playing in this. Um, hey, restoration comes uh, at different times of our life. Let, can, can I, um, I, I went out west about three years ago. I had a great time. Uh, went out to Phoenix, Arizona. And what's that place up in the mountains? Uh, just above Phoenix, up high, anyhow. Oh, man, it's the place I love. Up in the mountains. Huh? Blackstaff. Blackstaff. I, love, I don't know why. I saw a mountain one day at Blackstaff. It was snowing in Blackstaff in 70 in Phoenix. I said, I got to go there because y'all know I love snow. And uh, But I didn't know once you leave Houston, you better have a full tank of gas. Yeah. Did y'all hear that? You better not pass up a service station. I don't care if you got three quarters of a tank. You better get gas. Man, I one night it got about seven o'clock and started sun started and man I was down I had I had between a quarter and a half and I'm telling y'all I just about ran out of gas. Uh man, thank God for gas station lights, amen. And and uh, just just think about this. Sometimes you need to pull into a spiritual station and you need to be restored. Hey, let me tell you about this place of restoration. Now, now read what he says here. David says he restoreth my soul. Who does? The shepherd does. So what's he referring to? I think he's referring back to verse 2 with the green grass and the still water. They were hungry, they were thirsty, and he took them to the place where he knew they would get what they needed. Not only that, the place of restoration is where all your hurts can be healed. Don't you think about that for a moment. All your hurts can be healed. Hey, listen, you walk out there in the world long, you're going to have hurts. You go to work, you're going to meet every kind of demon, devil, and, and, and they're just going to come times when your spirit is maybe wounded. Um, again, speaking of the situation down in Texas, and man, the, the girl is she has a root of bitterness, and, and she needs to be healed, delivered. I'm telling you, God can heal the hurts of your heart. Amen. He can. Amen. Um, Sometimes people don't even know they hurt you. But you know they hurt you. And, and you go to the Lord and, and you have a chance to, to, to lay your life out there. And it's by the green pasture and it's by the still water that God restores your soul. He gives restoration. We all need healing at times in our heart and in our mind. We do. I don't care who you are. I don't care how tough you are. You need healing. And only the Holy Spirit of God can do that. He does that. Hey, I, I wrote this one down. He calms a troubled spirit. A troubled spirit. A perplexed spirit. Um, people are just angry today. And man, boy, everybody. Road rage. Yeah. Pull out there and just kind of go slow for about five minutes. Yeah, you'll get California and Every kind of sign in the world, man, that bit, that'll blow you off the road. And, and uh, hey, I, I wish I could say I was innocent. I've, I've been guilty of being aggravated at people not driving the way I think they ought to drive. <laughs> Amen. Um, God help us to realize this. God not only heals hurts, but God also gives calm in the midst of the storm. You remember the disciples were in the boat? And they went there and said, Lord, we're perishing. Don't you care? What a statement. Don't you care? Wow. Man, and uh, Jesus rebuked them for their lack of faith. Go back and read that passage. Oh, you of little faith. faith. Wow. Hey, could I just say this? As long as you're in this world, you're going to be in a storm. Somebody said either one's coming, you're in one, or you just got out of one. You're going to be in a storm. It just seems like all the time. 
So when he leads you, that path, remember, of refreshing, that path brings you to the place where you can be still for a moment and God can restore. Um, but there's, there's a real lesson. Oh, man. And, and, and two and three. Uh, Love. <coughs> lots of lessons. Yes. A lot of these storms are self-induced. Oh, absolutely, man. And so, uh, you know, to, to lay down uh, in the green grass and that kind of thing, sometimes you just got to, what's that old saying? You got to stop and smell the coffee or the roses. Roses along the way, sure. I mean, literally, uh, you, you wake up to an alarm clock and you're watching the clock at night and I got to get in the bed. I got to her, her, I mean, bu it's constant. Constant. Never stops. And, what's the last thing? After you get in bed, most of y'all do. Just before you go to sleep. I pray. Pray. Any of y'all plug up your phone last second, right at the last second? Plug, <laughs> plug it, do you? But you do that before you get into bed? Why do you plug it up? There you go. You know you've used it all day. It's, it's been a useful tool. The Lord's blessed you. And man, you've been busy all day. You've been running. Some of it's your fault. You've done some things, and all of a sudden the Lord lets you, and I'm using the analogy of going to bed, the Lord lets you get by that still water and that green grass just to be still and to recharge because he knows that the world bears on you. I don't know the word there. The world waits on you. I love that verse where Jesus said, take my, my yoke and my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Take that upon you, and he's referring to those oxen. So he's the one who heals the hurts of your heart. He's the one who calms and I almost put the fear of the world, but I put the troubled spirit because we, we do tend to be perplexed, edged. We're on the edge. We're, we're um, just at the point where we don't know what to do. But the Lord is there to heal. The, word, the Lord is there to calm you down if you'll do that. Um, <clears throat> when, when he does that, when he heals, when he calms us down, there comes that moment when the hand of the Lord intervenes. It, and I don't know how to phrase that. Uh, God gives a hand. He gives us the hand we need. L listen to the way he says this. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. And then he says something interesting. Not for my good, but for his name's sake. It's interesting, isn't it? For my name's sake. That my life will be a testimony of the goodness of grace. So he's healing, he's calming, but also the hand of God that reaches in and reaches down in those moments when it looks like the end is coming. Um, how many of you, when you're in a car and you slam on the brakes, first thing you do is this? <laughs> it's instinctively. It's in, yeah, it gets a pow. Well, sometimes it's like a slap upside the head, amen. Hey, by the way, guys, that's a good free slap. You ever do it? Just pow. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I'm just... Um, Hey, it's at that, it's that moment when, when the protective hand of God just, I mean, it, it's, it's there. You don't see it, but you know God's hand just held you in place. I scared a woman to death the other day in the shuttle. Sure. I, I, yeah. I mean, she's sitting like yeah. Mary Beth in the front seat with me. I had to slam on the brakes. Right. Somebody pulled out in front of me, and I done that, and it scared her to sure. death. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's it's protective. You can't. It's instinctive. By the way, um, God is our Father, and all the church said. Amen. As a Father, He instinctively brings protection into the life. His hand is always there, providentially, not accidentally, providentially, to move on our behalf. He knows when to step into the situation. Um, hey, years ago, I got in a little trouble. I made about three or four guys mad. Oh, this, I was little. I mean, we're talking pre-conversion. And... Um, I, I, man, I really got, I ran my, y'all know how I can run my mouth. Boy, I'm telling you, I couldn't back it up. And uh, I said, you guys don't leave me alone. And they just turned around and walked off. And I said, man, I'm Billy Bob bad. And then I turned around and my brother was standing there. Nobody. All four of them didn't want to mess with him. He whooped everything that moved and they knew it. I never knew he was there. Did not have a clue. He didn't say a word. He just said, and son, all four of them just, it was, it, yeah, I thought, man, look at me, Lord. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then turn around, there he was. Isn't it good to know that God's all, now, now listen, sometimes 
Be careful when you jump off the cliff and say, oh, yeah, Lord, catch me. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard about the guy that jumped off the building, 10-story building? Eighth floor, he said, so far, so good. Y'all got that? <laughs> Amen. So I just want to say to you, y'all need to think about that. That's pretty funny. Um, so far, so good. And if we're not careful, we'll do that. We'll go without God's leadership, and then we'll get out there in a mess and say, oh, Lord, you got you got to deliver me. And, and, you know, God never led you to be there in the first place. But God's hand is always there to stabilize the situation. He heals. He calms. But God instinctively moves in situations in ways that we never dreamed of before. By the way, God protects us even when we can't see that he's doing it. Amen. God is always there to provide and protect even when we can't see who he is and what he's doing in a marvelous way. And so David, now remember, David is the shepherd. And David has sheep. Now he's speaking kind of on behalf of the Lord. And he says... Uh, but let's just kind of take this. So the Lord is my personal shepherd, and he is leading me to these green pastures and this still water for a reason. Why? Because he wants to refresh me. I need to eat. I need to drink. He knows that, by the way, correct? Yes. But then he says this. But while I'm there, he restores my soul. Wow. Uh, restoration comes at a price that you must be willing to pull away you must be willing to stop you must cease to be quiet and to hear the know that the lord is is praying for him and asking god to believe hey miss lavina burns they're out in arizona wow leaving on friday god bless you y'all be careful so um in this place of restoration god is healing god is calming you down but most of all the hand of god is there to stay the troubles hey we don't have time to get into these next three, hopefully next week. I just want to mention number four. And then he says, and even when I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear evil. He protects us from the rebellious ones. I'll get into that a little bit deeper next week. He talks about, back in Psalms, but we don't have time to go over there. He says, my enemies have encamped around me. Why don't you think about that for just a moment. So here he is, he's in the middle, and his enemies have surrounded him. Nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. And he says, and I laid down and went to sleep. How did he do that? Uh, can, I, can I say something right here? As long as you're alive, the enemy's going to try to disrupt your relationship with God. The devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom, may, he, whom he may what? Devour. Devour. John 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his mission in your life but the Bible says God is the one who protects us from the and I almost put the rebellious one but there are rebellious ones out there in the world that want to see us destroyed our relationship with the God with God defeated and ultimately our spiritual ruin but we must be willing to, to, to follow the Lord in that path to get to the place of restoration the path leads to the place but it all begins with a personal relationship um, let me do a little bragging right here. Um, not on me. My wife has followed me all over the southeastern United States. Started out in a little church in Mississippi. We left there and we went to Florida. Now, first of all, my wife's a trap. I don't know if y'all know my wife was born in Paris, France. Lived in Nebraska, lived in California, lived in Florida, lived everywhere. And she just wanted a home, and yet about the time we would get comfortable, God would say it's time to go. Hmm. And on more than one occasion, she said, I don't want to go, but if you feel like we need to go, I'll go. Hmm. Pretty big. Hmm. Don't you hear that again? Hmm. I don't necessarily want to go, but if you feel like it is time for us to go, then I'll go. Wow. Hmm. Um, She's been pretty faithful with that. She really has. Uh, she could have said, no, I got kids. I want them raised here, Louisiana. Josh and Courtney were in the school system. And, and we'd kind of come, and, and by the way, um, when we moved to Louisiana, we couldn't afford one car, and by the time we got ready to leave, we, had two, we lived in the church parsonage, didn't have a house payment. They paid the utilities. She had a full-time teaching job. 
insurance free. I'm telling you, we were living pretty doggone good. Y'all remember that little red firebird I had? Hey, 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 hallelujah. And uh, I said, uh, Judy, I think the Lord may be leading us to North Alabama. <laughs> From relationship, you'll never find the places of, of refreshment, and you'll no, never discover this place of restoration where the Lord will lead you, heal you, calm you, and his hand will always be there to sustain you. And all the church said, amen. amen. Hey, next week we'll finish those last three. So some things to think about. Anybody got anything you want to add? Any other thoughts? Memorize this young boy. Yes, boy, I'm telling you. Um, you, you, you don't decide read it slow read it real slow hey Carl Derricott read it slow because I'm telling you there's some good stuff and then go read John 10 uh, about the good shepherd the great shepherd uh, man, man it really puts all that together and David is sharing a personal experience how he is a shepherd many times would take those sheep and get them out of a dangerous place into a safe place because as a shepherd, he knew that. And he related how God had took him, taken him from a difficult position, dangerous place, and put him in a good place. Man. And even when he was disobedient, and he was, David murdered one of his best friends because he got his wife pregnant. Go to your Bible. Uriah was one of David's best friends. Got his wife pregnant brought him home so that he could deceive him and think that if he slept with his wife, the baby, he would never know anything. And the husband refused, said, no, not one of my brothers right there in the floor. Wow. That's tough, isn't it? That's tough. And uh, God still loved him. It's tough. All right. Hey, anything else? Hey, Billy Senior. Hey, Ellie Collier. Hey, let's pray tonight. Ask the Lord to bless all these names that we mentioned a moment ago. Please lift them up in prayer. Uh, Cassidy Ferguson, Grace Ann Hall, Lisa Hamlin, Doug Heist, David Marcu, Landon, and Louis Sawyer. Those are church-related ones. I know there are others, but those are the ones, okay? Father, we love you. We thank you for the Word of God, for the Spirit of God that teaches us truth. And Lord, thank you so much for this psalm that just brings us close to you and reminds us that as a shepherd, you always have the best interest of the sheep at heart. Wow. Lord, even when it doesn't look like it and when it doesn't feel like it, you do. So, Lord, rather than us giving ourselves for you, you gave yourself for us. So help us to love you and follow you. We pray your richest blessings on these people. You would heal. We do pray for those who have family members struggling with COVID and just the uncertainties. And, and if, if we're not careful, the fear. And I know the Bible teaches we shouldn't live in fear, but it's so easy just to walk in that. So I pray for them. You give them the peace of God. Pass us all understanding. Lord, we love you. We bless you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. And all the church said? Amen. Hey, be careful. Hey, uh, I don't think we have a lot of kids on campus tonight. Be careful as you uh, walk around pulling out stuff as kids go back and forth, okay? Hey, brother, yeah. You're talking about driving that car. You got to